Hi, so I'm Emily McReynolds. Um, I'm the program director for the Tech Policy Lab at the University of Washington. Um, the Tech Policy Lab is a combination of our information school, computer science engineering, and our school of law. So we do uh, interdisciplinary research that includes things like this project. Um, I have a legal and a tech background, and in this project, my collaborators were Sarah Hubbard, who's out here in the audience, um, when she was at the Information School, um, Timothy Lau at the Information School, Aditya Sarif at Computer Science, and then Professors Maya Kakmak and Franzi Rosner, who are also at Computer Science. Uh, in 2015, we were seeing, let's see, we were seeing uh, a lot of news around new toys that were uh, more connected than in the past. So this Wall Street Journal article um, is titled, Talking Toys Are Getting Smarter, Should We Be Worried? And in this picture you have Hello Barbie, Cognitoys Dino, and my friend Kayla. These toys um, were somewhat of a hit in 2015, although my favorite example is the campaign for a commercial-free childhood who had one of the best Twitter hashtags I've seen in a while um, as an anti-Hello Barbie. It was hashtag Hell No Barbie. And when you see some of the hacks that have happened around children's data, you can start to understand some of the fears around privacy. So right around the same time in 2015, VTEC, who makes um, tablets for kids, because most people don't want to hand their $800 iPad to their three-year-old, VTEC makes a version that is uh, child-friendly. And uh, they, they were hacked, um, hundreds of thousands of kids' data, but also tons of data on parents. And this data included home addresses and chats and videos, which allowed the children's to be identified, connected with their parents, and then potentially located. Uh, more recently, um, we have enjoyed these teddy bears. Um, the IoT teddy bears, uh, the owners of these bears left their database exposed online, and so we, the hackers were able to get two million voice recordings of parents and kids. And shortly thereafter, another security researcher proved that it was quite easy, actually, to take over these devices because any phone could connect to it as long as they were within 10 meters. Uh, along those lines, you may have heard about my friend Kayla was in the news this year. She, the toy has officially been banned as a surveillance device in Germany. Uh, because again, similar to the Cloud Pets toy, you can uh, connect with my friend Kayla from a distance with any phone. So we wanted to understand how parents and kids thought about these devices, how they um, experienced them. So we uh, chose three research questions. What are the privacy expectations and concerns of parents for connected toys? What are children's mental models of their privacy when interacting with the toy? What, are, what parental controls do parents wish to exercise? So to explore this, uh, we did a user study. We recruited parent-child pairs, um, recruited through sharing the announcement with local parent groups, emailing listservs, posting on Facebook. Ultimately, we did nine interviews of about an hour long, um, and they were conducted with two researchers. So we explored two toys, Hello Barbie and Cognitoys Dino. You'll note my friend Kayla wasn't on this list. We started with some security ideas, um, but they were so easy to hack that it, we wanted to explore the ones that had better security. Um, this is Hello Barbie. Uh, in her, I've enlarged the text so you can see. Her necklace is a microphone speaker and it lights up. Uh, it's all embedded in that little necklace and then to, complete voice recognition, uh, you hold down her belt buckle. And then she charges when she's standing in her um, stand. But what's interesting to me is there's no recording notice anywhere on this. They specifically refer to quote unquote speech recognition, um, which turns out to be interesting when parents and kids start interacting with these devices. The second toy picked in part because it's gender neutral, um, is Cognitoy's Dino. His mouth lights up, or her mouth, or its mouth lights up, and then it has an activation button on its um, stomach. This proved to be a very popular toy with our parent, with our kids. 
This is the user interface. So once you've played with Barbie, you um, can go online and check out everything anyone has ever said to the toy. <laughs> so they, they file this under conversations. Um, this Hello Barbie website interface uh, contains all those recordings and you can see in the corner there it encourages sharing on social media, which led to further questions about how people would feel about sharing on social media. So to go over our study timeline real quick, um, we brought in the parent and child together. Uh, they were introduced to both toys. Uh, and then the researchers split up, and one stayed with the parent to set up Barbie through the app and uh, experience the web interface and do an interview. And then the other researcher went with the child to play with Dino and then Barbie and then have an interview. Uh, some of the interview questions we asked we asked the parents, what do you expect to be in the toy's manual and privacy policy? How do you feel about the ability to monitor what your child says to the toy? What would you, what, would you share what your child said to the toy on social media? And then with the child, we asked questions like, what would you talk about with the toy? Do you think the toy can remember what you say to it? And would you tell the toy a secret? Here trying to elicit privacy and mental models from the child without leading them to the answers we were looking for. Um, this is the email a parent receives when they set up Hello Barbie. In a way, this is really good. The, um, the email the parent receives isn't just an I agree to terms of service. It actually focuses on them giving permission. And then the small type that I've hidden because it's impossible to read anyway, uh, explains how they use those recordings, that they want to be able to share what your child has done, um, that they use it to test and improve their services and technologies, and um, it reassures that they do not use these to contact or advertise to children. So having experienced the toys and the apps, we, in talking to the parents, these are some of the things we heard about um, their views on recording. So this parent, said they wouldn't let their child use it with someone else because they don't know where the recording is going, recording feels permanent, and they don't know who can see or get this information. From a different perspective, this parent uh, said, I don't have time to go through all of these. I'm not going to click and listen. Um, I already have to sort through all the photos my kid takes on my phone. This is just one more pile of media. I have to determine what's useful, so I'm not even going to look at it, most likely. And this brings up another concern of the overloading with media. So this data is all being stored somewhere, and if they're too overwhelmed to even look at it, what kind of privacy can we reasonably implement in that situation? And children had opinions on recording as well. Um, all of the parents uh, were asked about the recording, and two of the parents said they would absolutely tell their child that this toy records. Mind you, it's not clear when you're playing with this toy that it, you're going to be recorded. So this parent, in telling the child, everything you share with the doll will end up on the computer, what would, would that make it fun for you? And the child uh, <laughs> did not think it would be fun. <laughs> In fact, they thought that would be pretty scary. Um, so along those lines, uh, when we asked the parents about sharing on social media, all of them said they would not share on social media. And here you have some of the reasons why. Uh, the one, parent four said, I think past a certain age, you need to respect your child's privacy and the idea that they might not want what they say to be shared amongst your gaggle of friends. Um, I think for some people it works. For me personally, it's not something that I would use. Uh, the child is not consenting to the questions they ask Barbie to be shared on Facebook. Uh, so while there's this perspective on sharing, we'll see in a little bit that um, the idea around monitoring what your kid says sometimes did have favorable responses from the, from the parents. So in exploring children's privacy expectations, um, with the, we asked the kids what they think the toy can remember um, about what they told it. And three of them said yes. Um, we had some sort of indeterminate answers. We didn't want to force them into a yes, no. So we got a really interesting one around yes, but it deletes it. Um, and 
So some of the kids who were aged six to 10 had a good sense of um, what the device might do um, if they, for example, told the toy a secret. Uh, in this case, the um, two children said they would tell the toy a secret, three said maybe, four said no. Um, some of these were rather emphatic no's, potentially given that we were sitting in a research lab with um, people monitoring them. Uh, so we didn't elicit any secrets from the kids during these um, studies intentionally. We didn't ask them to tell us a secret. And then we asked them whether or not they thought their parent could hear what they said to the toy. Um, one said probably. This was the same kid who said it was likely recording. Um, and then we had, again, four no's. So when we asked about parental controls from here, um, the, again, we see this, this email they've received around giving permission. Um, parents expressed wanting to have control over that data. Thank you. Um, and then, so in content controls, one of the parents said they would want something where they could control the language, um, like what words they could or couldn't say to the toy, and then asked for red flags. To, if, if a child said something that raised a red flag, that they would be notified. And in one way, this showed sort of a misunderstanding of the mental model. They didn't want their child recorded, but they wanted to be notified if their child said certain words. Um, so complicated perspectives. And then this was m my favorite with the futility of any kind of parental control. This parent had just tried to set up an app that controls online access. And even though it walked them through how to set up on different devices, they were horribly disappointed when both kids figured out ways to do things offline on their devices within a day. And they quickly, they, they said, I can't control any of that. This isn't going to work. And they just weren't that interested in parental controls after that. Uh, well, we looked at toys. We did ask parents uh, about whether or not their child had interacted with Siri, Cortana, Alexa. These digital assistants we're used to having as part of our daily life, it seems like now. Um, and several of the parents uh, immediately connected the Cognitoys Dino, which allows kids to ask questions that go out and then search the web for the answers, um, going to IBM Watson, actually. Uh, they, they made that connection between those two uh, devices very quickly um, and were doing an interesting comparison about how when it's on their phone with Siri or Cortana, they have direct control over it, but handing this toy to their kid means they no longer have control um, of when and how they use this, which was rather concerning to some of the parents. So a quick summary of the findings around privacy, parental controls, and toys versus other connected devices that we can come back to if you have questions. Um, so we concluded, because I have a policy background, we concluded with some considerations for toy designers and some recommendations for policymakers. Um, in the security and privacy realm for toy designers, we suggested that um, providing recording indicators would be really important. Um, most of the kids did not realize that the, using these toys meant they were being recorded. And since they already have these flashing lights, and in fact, Barbie provides um, some really good feedback. If you push down her belt buckle and she doesn't understand you, she will say, please be sure to hold the buckle down while you're talking. And in that same vein, we could see it's important for you to know that these conversations we're having are being recorded. Uh, not too hard to add to her um, canned list of activities to talk about. And then uh, reevaluating the need to record and store. While we recognize that um, to do voice recognition, you need some form of recording, that doesn't mean you can't have great data deletion practices. Um, as far as we know, these are stored for a very, very long time. And particularly with kids, it seems reasonable that you could delete these after, say, seven days. Also providing local storage. We recognize in the tiny Barbie doll that might not be as possible in other devices, um, but something to definitely consider. 
And then again, non-toys with child users. Um, I'm sure you've all heard about the fantastic story of Alexa and the little girl who wanted to play dollhouse and have some sugar cookies. And the parents found a very fancy dollhouse and three pounds of sugar cookies in their Amazon order list shortly thereafter. Uh, so these, these non-toys, these the thing about using these toys is when we see them, we think kids are going to be using them. We need to consider the privacy implications of these kids and what, where their data is going and if they're being protected. Um, but the Google Home, the Amazon Echo, and I think Microsoft just announced its device yesterday or today, um, they'll all have child users. So along those lines, we had some recommendations for policymakers to um, continue and increase in education efforts. Uh, the Federal Trade Commission has a, a good series of education efforts uh, around toys, around the, what is the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. Um, so we suggest that they can reinforce these SEAL programs. So Hello Barbie actually has this Kid Safe certified, which means it's compliant with um, the Children's Online Privacy Act. And then there's support for enforcement. Uh, the, the, the enforcers, the law enforcement folks would be well placed to continue uh, doing enforcement. And so last, I'll leave you with my contact information and I want to say a, a thank you to the Rose Foundation for Communities and the Environment. Their Consumer Privacy Rights Fund um, provided funding for us to do this research along with the UW Tech Policy Lab. And in case you haven't seen it, uh, recently, XKCD suggested a very helpful way of finding out if there is an always-on device in your friend's house um, via ordering two tons of creamed corn when you walk in the door. <laughs> so with that, I'll conclude, and if there are any questions. Hi, me again. Um, <laughs> sorry. Did any of the parents that you interviewed express any familiarity with COPPA or this, the privacy certification program? And do you think that influenced their responses at all? Or understand 